Incredible greetings. Hello, everyone. Incredible greetings. If you're watching this live, incredible evening. Um, we are going to turn this file that is not quite ideal um, for what I need it for. And we're going to turn it into a completely usable, high definition, high resolution, technically in this case, vector file, but I would be able to save this as a PDF, a JPEG, a PNG file um, as well. But whenever you are recreating using shapes, text, and tracing, you are creating a vector file, or as some of you guys like to call it, an SVG. Um, but an SVG is nothing more than an extension, a file format like PNG or JPEG or PDF or Word document or Excel document. It's just an extension. The file itself, because it's made up of solid shapes um, and paths, it's what's called a vector file. And vector files can be saved as an SVG to remain a vector file to be used in different ways and be able to color, like change out colors and things of that nature. Once it is flattened out to a JPEG or a PNG, you can't easily change the colors on it. Okay. Uh, you would need to either trace it or use softwares like Photoshop or Affinity Procreate where you can select those areas, select those pixels, and then be able to fill those pixels in with a different color. But as a vector, you can, it's like technically still layered and you can click on any part of it and change the color at any time or even fill it in with the pattern. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that because I need to improve the quality of the logo um, or the symbol that you see on screen. If this is something that you are interested in, do stick around. Um, you're going to learn a lot. I promise you, you're going to learn something. I'm going to poll you guys at the end to find out what did you learn, like what new did you learn, what was interesting to you. So pay attention. You can grab a pen and paper if you would like to take some notes, write down this title so that you can come back to this specific video if there is something in this uh, live broadcast or this video that you that interests you and you want to learn and practice more of. Okay. So what I'm doing now is, oh, wait a minute, which means my post could not be shared. Excuse me. My post cannot be shared. I wonder why. Oh, that's kind of weird. Hold on, y'all. I had to figure out why my post can't be shared. Okay, you shared your post. I was like, wait a minute now. Okay, let's go share again. Paste, share now. Is it that when I add words to it? Okay, no, we're good. All right, let me go ahead and just share this to my group real quick. Well, my groups. Um... And then we're going to get started. As you can see, I am going to do this in Silhouette Studio. You can create this in other programs. I didn't have the font, like that font. I didn't feel like uploading it. But I will show you real quick that I did make an attempt just so that people can see um, that you can start the process. Now, only thing I don't know is how that... Um, how the symbol in the middle would work because you can remove the background and technically you're supposed to make it a vector, all these different things so that you can add an outline around it. Not quite sure how that works. I didn't really go that deep into it, but I know I would get that question. And technically, yeah, you could recreate it over in Canva as well. But my program of choice is Silhouette Studio. You can do a lot in this software and it is absolutely free to use. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and just share it there. Let's paste and at everyone. And then we're going to come here. How many of you guys who are watching, or even for watching the playback, I always, you know, I, I don't want to forget about those who are watching because I want to hear, I want to get you guys' feedback as well. So for anyone who is watching this video, uh, who here uses Silhouette Studio? 
Um, and if you don't use Silhouette Studio, let me know what design software you use. All right, so we are all shared out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's see. Well, first, let's see. Um, hello, hello, incredible greetings. Thank you for joining from coastal Georgia. How art thou? Hello, Eve, how are you? Hey, Hans, my city girl, living in a country world, period. Okay, for the city girls. <laughs> hello, hello, incredible afternoon. Silhouette is my go-to. You use it, the only program I use. I use Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Yes, I use Silhouette Studio. Um, I use Business Edition. Awesome. So uh, this should be great for you guys because you may learn some things, some things that you maybe may have, um, it's going to be tools that you probably know, but you probably didn't think to utilize those tools to create a file and make it more usable for you. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Hello, Hans. How art thou? Oh, actually seeing your name just reminded me I'm not live on TikTok. Let's go over there, it's shall right. we? Okay, so we're gonna come over here. We're gonna go there and uh, design silhouette studio. Flip it. All righty, there we go. So let's. Um, let's get started. All right. So this was the image. And the reason why I want to, or I needed to redo this is a couple of different things. I mean, it's, it wouldn't really be that bad for how I plan to use it, which would be sublimation onto a, um, I'm going to actually put this on a senior crown with this, with the original size of this, this is like 19 inches. So had I shrunk this down to a size that's going to fit onto a crown, it would not have been too bad. But what, where the problem lies at is right down here. Now, technically I could have just cropped this out and then strategically placed that bottom part somewhere or like covered it up or maybe strategically placed it where it would end up behind the boa or the trim of the crown. But that's no fun. And that's not a great teaching moment for you guys. So I'm going to go through and show how um, how we would do this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show, you know, that you can technically take this out of here. Most would gravitate towards doing a trace and detach that is what is like burned into your brains to do to when you want to remove quote unquote a background we would see that white and that gray as a background like that box but in this case because there are two colors it wouldn't give you your desired results if you were to simply do a trace and detach so something like this and another way to look at this should i say is Pick out the simple, like the shapes. I teach this in my classes all the time to find the shapes. So at the end of the day, this is like that outline of it is a circle. So you would go over to your ellipse tool, kind of sort of find the center. I like to use shift and alt to make a perfect circle from the center. I'm going to try and get it to a uh, roundabout size and then... Oh, I did. Oh, I was right on the money. Yes, I was good with that one. So we're going to get it to be like a roundabout size. And then you would select it, go over to modify and crop. So once you did that, you removed it. And like you can see right here, 
uh, we still have a bit of that darker gray from the box. So I don't really care for that. So I'm going to completely recreate this, okay? So um, I actually have the size circle that I need, okay? Um, so I'm going to utilize this. I'm going to just duplicate it in front, hold down, alt, click. And I'm going to fill that in, go over here to my fill pattern, click on the dropper, and I'm going to fill it in with that gray, okay? And then I'm going to take my transparency down so that I can see through this. I can do an internal offset and, you know, measure it to get to that size, or you can simply duplicate it again and then uh, shrink it down manually. So there's keyboard shortcuts, which we do teach uh, my favorite sheet, keyboard shortcut. So you learn all of the top ones to learn in my 30-day training. I even give you a cheat sheet in my 30-day training of my go-to keyboard shortcuts. That's going to make your life a little bit easier in breezing through it. Um, but if you don't know keyboard shortcuts, you can right-click and copy. Then we want to paste this right in front. So we're going to right-click and we're going to choose paste in front. And then you're going to grab, you're not going to, you know, leave it already selected. You're going to go to one of the corner nodes. You're going to hold down shift and alt on a PC, shift and option on a Mac. Okay. And you're going to pull this down, which, you know what, I'm going to make it black just so that you can see the difference. And we're going to shrink this down until it is the size of that circle that's in the middle. And then we let go of shift. Oops, sorry. We're going to, ah, come on, stop that. Let's try this again. We're going to hold down shift and all or shift and option. And we're going to shrink this down. You're going to let go of your mouse first and then let go of shift and all or shift and option and it's going to stay in that size. So now I'm gonna hold down shift, click on the outside and pull that away. Select them, take my transparency back up. Oops, I'm sorry, up. Click on it and I'm gonna sample this gray color. And just so that I have the Maroon, I'm going to sample that and then remove the line color, okay? They have this really close. I don't really care for how close it is, so I'm going to take some creative liberty and we're going to hold down, again, hold down, shift, and alt so it adjusts from the center proportionally. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because it's kind of close to the edge. I want to have a little bit of gray around the outside, so I just made that just a tad bit bigger, okay? All right. Now, I've already gone through all of my fonts and stuff and went through searching through a whole bunch of them to where I have the font up here, okay? If you are brand new to Silhouette Studio, you're going to click the A on the left-hand side to initiate text. Click on your screen. It's going to give you a blue flashing line. You're going to type out your text. Once you have your text typed out, you're going to click off, click back on that text, and then choose a font. You're going to get your font by clicking on the A on the right-hand side, okay, right here, and that is how you will change the font. So we're going to click here. I'm going to change the color and then also change the line color. Now, I don't like how small this is. I like to design a little bit bigger. When it comes to vectorizing things, you can design it bigger. You can make it big, small, and it's never going to lose its, uh, it's never going to distort. It's never going to lose its quality. So we're going to start much bigger. All right. So I'm just going to make this super big to make this a little easier to work with. Okay. This is what, 17 inches. That works for me. I like to duplicate everything just in case. So I am going to duplicate this and move it off to the side. Same thing with my circles. I'm going to duplicate them, move them off to the side. I'm going to take my Miami New Orleans Senior High in Sports Medicine. I'm going to shrink it down 
And what I'm going to do is kind of get an aroundabout side. Dang it, not on group. I said bring it to the front. That's what I meant to do. Bring it to the front. I'm going to, okay, so the D is kind of straight up and down. So I'm going to bring this down here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That girl is good, okay? I was damn near perfect with kind of visualizing that size. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, just a little bit, because it does kind of like blur out. Hey, hey, hey. It does kind of blur out some. So right about there should be pretty good. My end looks pretty good. So that's the size that I want, okay? I know, right, Glow? Like, I did pretty good with that one. I, I, I bought that pretty good. Okay, so now we have that. We're going to do what's called text to path. All right, you're going to take your text and you're going to double click on it. You're going to see the green box, the blue line, and this little white circle. You're going to take that white circle we're going to bring it to either the outside of the gray and then use the slider to bring it down, okay? And then use your text box and go to character spacing to spread it out, okay? And you can move it around or you can bring it down to the gray box, but push it outward. And then when you do it that way, you won't have to spread it so much because it's already gonna be kind of spread out, okay? Now, if we want this to line up almost exact, I did take my transparency back, um, back down, but I'm gonna take my transparency up. Oops, nope, let's do this again. We're gonna take our transparency up some so we can see through it. I can put the original, and remember I made my gray a little bit bigger, so I gotta line it up with the inside gray. And then I can take this and like get that lined up a little. Once again, your girl is good. All right, I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to, let's see, maybe go to 90. Let's go 95. And move this over. All right, it might be like 98. Ha <laughs> ha, pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit off in some areas. Or I could even just leave it at 100. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but I want it to be kind of close to how the original was. So me putting it on the outside, pushing it out, making it um, 100, leaving it at 100 uh, is going to kind of sort of give me the results that I want. Once I have that where I want it at, I'm going to right, I'm gonna right click on it and go convert to path. And that's going to leave it in that arch. We're going to make the color like that. And then I'm going to take sports medicine and we're going to do the same thing. We double clicked on it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it to. Now, as you can see, it flips towards the inside. I mean, towards the outside, you're going to push your mouse up slowly until it flips on the inside. It can go on either circle and then you can pull it up or pull it down. So if I pull it here, I'm going to take my slider and pull my slider down. This, the sports medicine is actually a bigger font. So while it's um, still curved, we haven't released compound path on it yet. We're going to select it. We're gonna come over to our text. And I'm going to try out a couple different numbers here. So let's just go straight to 80. That looks like it is <laughs> damn near perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, who's doing it all wrong? 
not on this channel, love. Alrighty then. So we have that there. Okay. And I'm going to change the color. If I want to make sure that it's lined up, perfect. Over here, perfect. Yes, yes. And then we're going to click on it and convert to path. All right. So now I'm going to hold down shift, click on that center, click on that outside ring, outside circle, click on Mommy Norlin Senior High, move it off to the side, and take our transparency back down to 0%. And so we basically have what's here. Now, it looks a little bit thinner. I can use line colors to thicken that up some. I can do a small offset to thicken that up some, but it's actually pretty good. Um, it's, it's pretty good the way that it is. Now, had I not um, converted to path, I could play around with the size of the font. But if we go here and we make the line color the same color, you can see see how that thickened that up, but it's not, that's an optical illusion because we haven't added any weight to it. You would have to go up here to the top. Um, where, is, where are we at? Right here. So you guys can see right there. And that's where you're going to add your weight to it so that it actually, um, it would apply like once you print it or whatever. So I'm going to... Uh, make that, let's try 0.5. Uh, so let's go with one. Uh, I like that one. Maybe 1.25. Right, I think I like it better at that thickness. And then I'm going to come over to modify and I'm going to detach the lines. And I'm going to weld them all together just so that it stays thick. Okay. So like that, like that, that's pretty much done. Mm -hmm. Although I could actually, ew, I don't like this gap right here. I could play around. I can go back. This is one of the reasons why we also duplicate because now if I don't like it, I can just go back in and I can recreate it. I know all of the... And I may have actually put too much space in there. That might be what happened there. That there was, let's see. Nope, there was only one space in there. And because it's curved, you really can't just move the letters around. I would have to go in and actually redo that. But I'll do that off camera. But for the most part, that's how you would do that. You just want to, I actually, in teaching it, I didn't see that it was spread out. Had I saw that, I would have fixed it before I converted it to path. All right. Now we're going to create this center part right here. We're going to do that through tracing. We're going to go over to our trace tool, which is the one that looks like a little butterfly. Bring that over. You're going to go select trace area, place your box around that image or that object you want it to fully go around it and you want to see the yellow and you're going to do a regular trace once you do that trace you're going to do an offset so we're going to go over to the offset tool we're going to put an <coughs> offset on this and increase our size of the offset. I want it to be a little bit bigger. Okay, corner. And we're going to hit apply. That is, I like to use my properties dropper now. So I don't have to remove it. So that is a design edition or above feature. But I'm just going to hit my properties dropper, click here. It's going to give me the color and also remove the line color. And same thing for this middle one and sample that color. So now 
I have this recreated. We're going to select both, shrink this down, which mm, I can probably give myself a little bit more space with that one. Um, this one that I chose, it didn't have as much space in between as the original. There is a way to really get that to look like that. And that's by doing a internal offset before we put the offset on it. Oh, what happened there? Did it move? Yes, it did. Center those two and I can group it together. So yeah, this one didn't have as much space as this one did in between here, in between the head of the snakes. They are a little bit close. But overall, kind of sort of, you know, like there. So if I really wanted to get this to be pretty much spot on, I'm going to do another trace. And hit trace, click on that trace and do an internal offset. I thought I had my offset window open, but I don't. So offset, internal offset. And I just need it to be really small. Um, so that actually might even work because I don't need it to be super, super like a big inset. So we're going to hit apply. Fill that in with some color. I'm going to make it a compound path. And now when I do the external offset, I'm going to see a little bit more space in between, um, in between here. So, oops. There we go. Offset. I'm going to move my slider some. I'm going to bring it back down. I don't want this area to touch or the offset to touch the line here. So I'm going to scale that back right now. Your distance will vary. It's not going to always be the same. Even if you were to go find this exact image and follow along, it really depends on the original size that you make it for like how, how far the distance will be for this desired result. So I'm just going to take this down. I'm going to just go 0.25 just to type it in. Let's see. Hit enter. Um, I'm okay. Nope. It's actually not crossing over like I want it. So 0.275. Let's see. What does that give me? Mm, it's kind of close, but it's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply. Mm. Group. I'm still not loving the way that it's fitting around it. I may have to make my offset just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on my offset again, go offset, because I want this to close in. 0 0.05, mm, 0.065, or 0 0.06, 0 0.06 is what I'm going to use just so that it overlaps. I'm going to hit apply, hold down shift, click on my original offset, and just weld them two together. I like that better. Group it, and then I'm going to shrink it down. Mm. 
Okay. I'm going to move it over here. Now that I know it's the right size, hold down shift, select my two circles, and I'm going to hit center. And that's going to center that on there. And we have recreated this in a high resolution version. Okay. Uh, let's see. I am wonderful. How are you, Tanika? Um, let's see. I thought I saw a question about the um, convert to path. What's the reason for convert to path? Convert to path will make it stay in that shape. So once you have locked it in, you use convert to path to keep it curved um, to whatever or because if you do a wave path, if it was um, a slant, you just want it to be locked into that place. So you do convert to path. I mean, you can also do subtract, you can do weld, you can do make compound path, but you just have to turn it into a path where it's no longer text. I cannot go in there and change that text any longer now that it's converted to path. So I am gonna fix, um, I like the sports medicine, so we're going to group that together. I'm going to group all of this, and I am going, oh, I thought I did this one at the right size, but I guess I did it. So we're going to shrink, shrink this down. Um, let's... Okay, double click. I'm gonna add that to here. Bring it down. Adjust my character spacing. Oh, see, I don't know why it did that last time. I think I may have hit the space bar because now it's pretty spot on. Uh, let's go, let's bring this window. What the heck just happened? Alrighty, there we go. We're going to increase our character spacing some. So maybe 115. Pull that back. And then to keep it locked in like this, click off, click on the text, right click and convert to path. There we go. So now I have a high resolution version of this to add to my senior crown design. And if I wanted to, because uh, like with her, she wants a purple, black, and white, I think. So although this is the school colors, if I wanted this to match the color of the outfit and shoes she's going to wear, I can choose any part of this and make it a different color. So I meant to actually make the outline the purple, and then I can make this black. Oh, that was grouped together. So let's ungroup. There we go. So I can do it that way. I can now make it where this is purple. I can make this black or gray, or I can make that gray, make the end, ooh, don't move, make the inside black, not that. I said make that part gray, and I said make the inside black, or I can make it the same color as here. I can make these gray and then make this 
why are you acting crazy? Make this black. So I'm able to change this up however I want because it is now vectorized, okay? So hopefully this was helpful for you guys um, in learning a little bit more about the tools. Thank you so much for the likes. Thank you for the roses. I appreciate it over here on TikTok. Ooh, we're at 3,000 likes. Yes. Uh, before I get off, any questions? Any questions? If you would like to learn how to use Silhouette Studio and get a full understanding of all of the tools and functions, we do have Essentials of Silhouette Studio, Learn Silhouette Studio in 30 Days, where we go through each of the tools and functions. I break down what their fundamental uses are. And then towards the end of the 30 days, you get to see all of that come together in a wide variety of designs fit correcting designs, fixing little parts of designs, creating designs from scratch. So you'll get like four or five days uh, and some of them in two different sessions of that. Right now, all classes are buy one, get one 50% off um, in honor of HS Inc. month because we celebrate three years of our honestly speaking line of products. So if you're interested, head on over to the website shop.hsinc365.com, go to classes and playbacks, and you will find all of the ones that we have available right now there. Like I said, I do recommend our, if you want to learn Silhouette Studio, I highly recommend our 30-day Essentials to Silhouette Studio, and you can uh, look on there and see what is covered on each day. Does that course teach Tumblr wraps? So the Essentials of Silhouette Studio is more so about learning the tools and functions. It is not a design course at all. Like I said, we do go through the, um, we do go through like creating some different designs. You'll kind of see some things come together, but it is not a design course. In order to learn to design, you have to have an understanding of the tools and functions and how they work. So that's what that is primarily for. We do have other courses that will focus on designing. For a Tumblr wrap, it doesn't matter if you're designing it for a shirt, a Tumblr wrap. Uh, you just have to know the sizes. And you'll learn how to create sizes of rectangles once you measure and you know the size of it. You can then fill that in with whatever types of designs, whether you are bringing in PNGs and JPEGs and um, trace and detaching or tracing it. If you're creating your own SVGs, if you're bringing in images and you're going to crop them down. So that is like, you can learn those skills in any of our design trainings, but we don't have one that specific, like an actual class like that, that specific for Tumblr apps. <laughs> hey, just say I use Photoshop and Silhouette Photoshop more since I'm still learning Silhouette Studio. Okay. And they can go hand in hand. I do utilize both. I utilize Silhouette Studio a lot. I use Photoshop for certain things. And for Canva, I personally like Canva more so for um, advertisements and, and social media posts than anything. All right. So if there are no questions, thank you guys so very much for joining me this evening. Uh, that concludes this training. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them as a comment below. Join our Facebook group, Silaholics Anonymous, Silhouette Help with the Professor, as well as our group, Honestly Speaking, the best submission group on Facebook. Yes, that is literally the name. <laughs> uh, so you can join our Facebook groups and post your question, your help questions there. Okay. Oh, we have one more question here. What is the name of the glitter? Oh, that's not in this video, love. Sorry, we're not talking about those things. Um, but you can post the question in the group and I'll answer it there, okay? All right, y'all. Until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.